What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So Netflix just had their Q1 2022 earnings and let's just say it wasn't the very best. I mean, look at their stock year to date. We're down $381 or in other words, 63, 64%, which is terrible. And Netflix is one of those companies that has been super stable over the years. It's been a growth story. It's been a great company and it's been nothing but growth. But unfortunately, all these things are starting to change slowly by slowly and that's why we're here today. So in this video, we're going to be discussing what the future of Netflix is and what I'm doing with my Netflix stock and shares. So if you guys want to see all that and my thoughts and opinions and are wondering why Netflix stock is so down bad, then stay tuned. And you guys already know that we're going to be talking about it right after this intro. The biggest reason why Netflix lost pretty much half its share value since the beginning of this year is none other than them losing subscribers for the first time in a decade. Yes, there's a lot of different factors that are going into the reasons why they lost Netflix and we'll pretty much cover most of them in this video. But to be honest, this is a huge story. For example, if a growth company starts to lose its growth, it's it's zing it's whatever makes it a great growth company that's going to be the end of its growth story and that's exactly what's starting to take shape for the netflix stock and their shareholders so we all know what's going on in russia i'm not going to go too much into detail but because of those conflicts and events netflix has lost 700,000 subscribers from russia yes they were able to make up 500,000 subscribers from all across the world but that still leaves them at a net loss of 200,000 subscribers and that's enough to send them down their share, shares down quite significantly because this is the first time again that they lost subscribers in a decade. And yes, this could be a one-time event, but the fact states that they did lose subscribers for the first time in a decade. With that being said, what makes it even worse is yes, they lost subscribers for the first time in a decade, but they're also projecting they're projecting a loss of 2 million subscribers for the next quarter, which is just absolutely insane. So with that being said, it kind of does seem like the end of Netflix in terms of its growth story. And again, it just sucks because Netflix has been one of those companies that has been done, been doing so well. It's been sustainable growth. We know that it had an organic, uh, non-organic boost because of the whole COVID situation where everyone is at home. Everyone's bored. Everyone's on TikTok. Everyone's watching TV and everyone's subscribing to Netflix. Now that boom is no longer here. There's pretty much no lockdowns across the world. It seems like COVID is starting to get forgotten and less and less people are starting to talk about it. And with that comes less of stay at home stocks and these stocks include none other than stocks like Netflix and another thing that really does suck for Netflix is the rising competition so let's take a look at some of its competitors for an example we got HBO Max out here which actually gained 3 million subscribers from the prior quarter unlike Netflix where they actually lost 200,000 subscribers and that's just one example there's tons of other streaming services out there that are unfortunately competitors to Netflix we've got Disney Plus we've got Hulu Amazon Prime Video Apple TV Peacock of course HBO Max Paramount ESPN has their own as well and you know the list just goes on and on Crunchyroll is another one and unfortunately for Netflix yes they were the original giant yes they were the first innovators with the subscriber uh, with the subscriber business model and streaming business model but unfortunately it seems like there's so much competition out there this is an easy business model to kind of replicate and it seems as if Netflix is no longer that giant that that leader yes they'll probably always be kind of the leader the the name that everyone recognizes but at the end of the day there's so much competition out there and it's leading to a lot of people unsubscribing yes netflix does have their original content and you know some of the some of them have been just amazing i mean squid games was really good tiger king was huge at one point uh bridgerton's pretty good never watched it but i've heard a lot of good things about it but it seems as if the sentiment for their original content is starting to wane. A lot of people are kind of going towards other other streaming services. You know, there's a lot of original content for Hulu. Disney Plus has so much more original content. Um, and a lot of people are kind of trending towards that direction. So it kind of just sucks for Netflix. And it seems as if the, the value of Netflix is just starting to go down. And of course, a lot of people aren't subscribing. So unfortunately, that is what it is for Netflix. But there are some other factors. 
Not only is Netflix's original content possibly not as good as it used to be or as good as some of its competitors, as losing a lot of its content to its competitors. For example, once Disney Plus started, all the Disney shows that are have expiring contracts are starting to go back on Disney Plus. For example, The Office used to be on Netflix, but now it's no longer available there and it's being sent to, I think it's on Peacock TV now. So this is just an example of parent companies taking back the shows that they own and putting them on their own streaming services. But with that being said, there's another big factor and that has to do with the price. Netflix is a lot more expensive than some of its competitors. We've got Disney Plus at $8 a month compared to Netflix's, I believe it's they raise the price to $15.99 or $14.99. Which, yeah, Disney Plus doesn't have that big of a selection compared to Netflix, but a lot of people are going to see $8 compared to $15 and just make that make that choice. And there's Apple TV, there's Hulu with no ads, and there's Hulu with ads, which is still cheaper than Netflix with no ads. We've got HBO Max, no ads, about the same price as Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Paramount Plus. And all of these selections are a lot cheaper. Oh, there it is right here. Netflix is about $15 per month. So... With that being said, yeah, it's a lot cheaper to go with the competition. And if Netflix isn't providing the same amount of original content that, you know, a lot of us like, then it is what it is. A lot of these people are going to start going to their their competitors. You know, it's kind of like how TV was back in the day. You'd select only a few certain channels. Well, now maybe a lot of people are selecting just a few streaming services. So it's kind of ironic how that happened, but you know, it is what it is. Now that we know the biggest factors on why Netflix is starting to lose a lot of its subscribers, let's talk about what the CEO said in order to get back some of those subscribers. So he said that he's thinking about a way to actually implement an ad ad supported tier so possibly this would be maybe a five six seven eight dollar tier that actually has ads which is something that netflix has never done in the past but this way they can compete with hulu with ads they can lower the prices and a lot of people might be able to just jump back on the bandwagon for example let's say they come out with another hot series um i'm just gonna call it squid games 2.0 because i i can't think of a good name so anyways let's say that this comes and it's a huge trend on tiktok instagram everyone's talking about it just like the original squid games but now you have unsubscribed let's say that you want to get back on and you don't have a free trial and you know a lot of these shows are just you know you watch it you binge it and then you cancel your subscription so maybe you just get it with ads that's going to be maybe six seven eight dollars then you binge it and then you cancel your subscription yeah it's not going to be good for the longevity of netflix but at least it gives a reason for subscribers to have, hop back on the bandwagon and back onto netflix maybe they see some other shows that weren't on there before and maybe they stay for a long time but that's just like an idea of where the ceo is kind of heading in my personal opinion i think it's a good idea to add ad supported tiers just because you know you can actually generate a lot more money through these ad supported tiers and probably your own long-term subscription bases with no ads. I mean, the amount of ads that people on the ads tier supported, or the ad supported tier are gonna get, is just probably gonna be huge. So this is gonna definitely generate some revenue and hopefully with this revenue, you know, Netflix would be able to reinvest that revenue into better original content or into innovation, which leads me to my next point. One of the biggest things that Netflix can work on is their ecosystem or the value that they provide with their company and what their subscription can actually bring. So for example, we've got Amazon that has Amazon Prime. We've got Apple subscription that can actually give you Apple TV, but Netflix just gives you Netflix. Well, that's about a change. Basically, they have this way to Let's just say, I guess you can game on your mobile device. So this is the whole thing on it. I guess they haven't really rolled it out to everything, but basically what they're saying is if you have a Netflix subscription account, then you can actually access gaming on your mobile device. So, I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't think that's rolled out anywhere. I haven't been able to test it out or anything like that, but I think that's a good idea to start to innovate because if you're just a subscription company that has no plans of innovation, then I mean, of course you're going to lose that whole growth story and of course you're going to start to lose all the value that you accumulated because of your growth potential so if netflix is able to innovate and grow that side of the platform then this is going to be huge for its growth story to continue but if it's not then i think that growth story is about to end i mean one other cool thing that i did notice about netflix that maybe they're going to possibly enter into is for example there's this one episode of black mary where you can kind of pick and choose your destiny and kind of go where you want to go so it gives you like a dialogue and then you can actually yourself as a viewer can decide where you want to go in the dialogue it lets you choose so if maybe they do a little bit more immersive movies like that or maybe even vr movies 
that could be a whole area where Netflix can start to innovate that in gaming alone. But who really knows if they're going to go down that direction or not? Personally, my final thoughts are if Netflix itself is going to stop growing, then this would be wise. And that's just because they're no longer a growth company. That growth story is starting to become over. They're losing competition to other streaming companies. They're going to lose these subscribers. The original content, it might get better. It might get worse. Who really, who really knows? I mean, when you come out with a show, you don't really know if it's going to be that popular. You don't know if it won't be popular at all. So I guess my final thoughts would be, I'm not going to sell this stock right away. Um, a lot of other investors like Bill Ackman sold their stocks. Personally, it's just tough because I don't really know what direction Netflix is going. I love Netflix as a stock. I like the whole business model with subscriptions. But at the end of the day, if the growth story is over, there's no longer a reason for me to be in the, the stock anymore. I'm down a lot, as are a lot of other investors in Netflix. So to me, it doesn't really hurt too much to hold it until I see a point where they're no longer innovating, they're no longer growing. And if they do get into gaming or VR, I'd happily keep the stock. I'll keep buying the dip. My average is around $400, which is very unfortunate if we're looking at the price right now. I'm down bad. But if we're able to innovate with Netflix and if they're able to maybe maintain their subscriber cart and grow them, unlike their projections where they're starting to lose or they're projecting to lose 2 million subscribers, which would be terrible, then I'm all aboard. Let's let's maintain it. You know what I mean? So I'm I don't want to say I'm bullish on Netflix because I'm really not. But if they are able to innovate, then I will be. At this point, again, I'm just down so much that it doesn't really matter to me. I'm kind of insensitive to this. I personally don't sell out of any stocks until I see a huge fundamental change. And this would be a huge fundamental change, but I'm still holding out a little bit. I'm a little bit optimistic that maybe they'll be able to innovate. And if they are, again, I'll stay in the stock. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are staying in the stock or if you guys are selling out. It's definitely a tough decision. It kind of came out of the blue. Maybe you could have projected it or maybe predicted it from kind of the COVID boost and all these, the rising of their competitors. But me personally, I didn't think this was going to happen so soon and maybe this growth story is over and if it is then i'm out of this stock unfortunately even though i do like netflix maybe i'll keep the small shares that i have but at the end of the day it is what it is let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and that's pretty much it for this video let me know again if you guys are keeping this stock or selling it and with that being said you guys remember everybody eats